we're going to do some blacksmithing, we're going to do a little educational blacksmithing, and we're going to um, take a railroad spike, and again, this stuff all comes from estate sales, don't go out to your local railroad and take these, but these are things that you get in estate sale. We're going to turn this railroad spike into this tomahawk, at least this is going to be the, the, the beginning of it. All right, so we have the LP on right now. The reason I like to start with the LP is we have a lot of coal and charcoal. That gives off a lot of sulfur, a lot of smoke, which we don't want. So we'll go ahead and let that get started a little bit, and then I'm going to kick some air onto it. The air will add the oxygen to it, and it'll get the fire a lot hotter. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the blower on. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to start adding on the uh, charcoal. The charcoal is already in here. We're going to add on the, the coke and we're going to add on the coal in little sections. We're going to try to get this whole thing filled up with um, with coal. What we're really trying to get to is a temperature about 900 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't want to melt anything, but we don't want it to be, you know, three or 400. So we're going to actually open up the, um, the, the block on the fan so it's going to be a lot louder, maybe a little hard to hear. But we're going to just keep loading this up until we get a nice bed of coal. I said, I want to start adding some of that. This is the coke. This is the stuff from the coal that we used last time. <laughs> so from this, this will be the front of the tomahawk. This will be the back of the tomahawk. So all we have to do is actually, it's called upsetting. We have to take all this material and move all this material up to here and flatten this material down. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it in. Stick this into the furnace. Get this red hot and start flattening that part down. Hot. We're gonna go ahead and get a good grip on it. We're gonna flatten the back side of this. You don't have to kill it. Just until the red goes away. We'll go side to side. And again, this is going to be the front part of the axe. We're going to do a tomahawk. We're going to do this a little different from the last couple. And that's about it. So, so what we're going to do now is called the upsetting process. We want to try to make this as short as we can. We're just going to start hitting it, keeping it flat. Just shrinking this much, as much as possible. And I'm straightening it. And flat. throw it back in the furnace. So now that we've upset the, the railroad spike, you can see we're less than three quarters of where we were before. So this is a lot thicker than what this side is. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put it in the, the fire and we're gonna actually go ahead and make our first cut to it. So this is pretty much completed. What we wanna do now, now that we have the, the, the railroad spike upset, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna punch a hole through it. So we're going to take a chisel, hard to show on gloves, we're going to put a chisel right here while this is red hot, punch a hole through this, and we're going to start to expand that hole out using different punches and different drifts that I've made to get it to this diameter. This is pretty much the final diameter of where the handle is going to go through. Now we're going to use the peen side. This isn't a cross peen. 
go ahead and draw some of this pedal out. We're just going to keep rounding. That's going to move the metal back this way. And that's about it. We'll go ahead and we'll put that back into the furnace. What we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to start taking the corners, the edges off of this for the back. We're just going to keep turning this. Just want to hit on the back, on the back, further back, right, right here. Here, further back. Uh, I would use I would use this hammer and just hit. Yeah, just there. We're going to just round the edges off. We're going to go ahead and draw. I have this. This isn't flat anymore. If you, if you notice, this is a little bit of an angle. Slowly draw this back to a point. This is going to be that beak on the back of the one tomahawk that we saw. All right, that's good. Good. Stop. Cut. That good? Yeah. We're going to hammer. Now here's the problem that we have because we have this center piece that's down. We want to. Here's how the tomahawk turned out happy with it actually that looks pretty cool I guess the guy I'm making this for is going to be pretty happy with it so remember what it was like before oh, the whole back end is now drawn out and bent it's uh, still been still pretty hot it's been sitting in there I let these things um, temper kind of stabilize around temperature so that come out pretty good I'm happy with that so this is the rough forge tomahawk I actually took a piece of oak the head. I cheat a little bit. I put it in a wood lathe to turn it down to about the right size. And then I'll go ahead and use the draw knife. But uh, that came out pretty nice. I have to do some heat treating, a little bit of cleanup work on it. So once the tomahawk itself was um, heat treated and cleaned up, again, it's not the final. It, it, uh... So once the rough forging of the tomahawk was done, I wanted to see what to do with the handle. I took a piece of oak from uh, one of the trees. It's been drying downstairs, uh, drying a wood burner for a little bit, and it's all uh, all the moisture's out of it, so it's ready to to, to shape. So put it on a wood lathe. It was probably an uh, inch and a half diameter, which is way too big for this. So I put it on a wood lathe to kind of straighten it out, and then I use a draw knife. When I'm done, I'll take some, well, what I did when I took some um, walnuts. So the hulls from a walnut, and I smashed those up which is what the Native Americans would have used as a dye. So that's basically a stain. And then four or five coats of uh, hand rub linseed oil on it. So this should be good for uh, any outdoor activity. It's not gonna get, not gonna get soaked. Okay, so the last furnace process that we're gonna do is heat treating. Heat treating is gonna take this tomahawk head and the, um, the, the, the metal's still the same, but the hardness is gone. Once you heat this up, the temper or the hardness is gone. So we're going to go ahead and put this into a heat treating oven. Actually, it's just uh, uh, LP gas. We're going to get this red hot. And there's charts out there to tell you um, how hot this needs to get to a magnet doesn't stick to it. Again, this is a tomahawk head. This isn't something that I'm not really that worried about. So what I'm going to do, I have to straighten a little piece here. Then I'm going to go ahead and heat this up red, red hot, real red hot. I'm going to dip it in oil. I'm going to heat this up. I'm going to dip that in oil. And then when we're done with that, we're going to um, stress relieve or draw. They, they call it the tempering process, but I call it the drawing process. What we're going to do is we're going to heat treat this. It's going to turn black. I'm going to go and clean all this off. And then I'm going to heat it up just until this is a straw blue. That straw blue is, uh, is around 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, some people let this soak in an oven for a couple of hours. Again, I don't think this is that critical. So, so I like this over cold forge. No carbon here. So when I'm heating, I don't really care when I'm doing the first forging. Whenever I want to heat treat, I want to keep the carbon to a minimum. So here's the tomahawk head after it's been cooled. See that black coating on it is oil. Again, if this would have been in my fire, the, the, the charcoal fire or the coal fire, it would have been a lot more slag on here. So this, this is nice. But another reason for using oil, especially used motor oil, is you can case harden it. So there's a little bit of carbon left in that oil. 
and that will go to the outer edge of this and provide some extra hardness. So really, the only thing that's hard, really brittle, is here. I mean, if you hit this with a hammer, you could break it, but again, I didn't get it that hot. So I'm going to go down and wire brush, get this all cleaned again, and then show you the right temperature for um, the actual stress relieving or tempering. I don't know if you can pick up the subtle color, but once it's cleaned back to metal, shiny metal, you can actually see the blue on the tip there. Once you've done that, then you know that it's not going to shatter if you hit it with a hammer. 